Hi, this is the first video for Chapter 7, Homework 4. So the first question here, it's kind of cut off, but this says question 3. It says, what value of D would make the line E and F parallel? So it, it looks like they're parallel, but if in fact these two angles were equal, it would actually prove that it's parallel. So we're going to take both of these angles and set them equal to each other. So the first angle should equal the second angle if they are parallel. So if these two equations are equal, so 5 times 2d minus 3, if that is in fact equal to 6d plus 11 plus 2d, then you would be able to prove they're parallel. So let's solve for d. We distribute we need to get all the d's on one side. So I'm actually going to combine these two d's on this side, 6d and 2d, to make 8d. And then send that d over there. So 2d. Now I need everything on this side. So I get 13, so hopefully that's similar to what you got. Now here it says, what is the value of x? So this is kind of a congruent triangle theorem question. We believe that this triangle here would be 90, and that would be 90, and this uh, side matches this side, and we know this side and this side match because of reflexive. So this would be, this triangle has to equal that triangle because it's side angle side. We could also call this leg-leg right triangle congruence theorem. So because these are twin triangles, uh, CPCTC tells us that these corresponding parts should be congruent. So that's all the reasons, but all they really want to know is, what would x be? So we know these two have to be equal, so we're going to set them equal to each other and solve. So if I subtract 3x on both sides, now if I add 12 on both sides, and if I divide 2 on both sides, I get 21. So I know that the number has to be 21 for these two sides to in fact be equal, and that is one of my choices. Now these two were deleted, so question 7 says, what would be a value where these would be parallel for angle 1 and 5? So when I put angle 1 and 5, I notice that those two angles would be congruent if, in fact, they're parallel. And this is a symbol that means they are parallel. So if they're parallel, angle 1 and angle 5 are equal because of the corresponding angle postulate. So I'm going to set these equal to each other and solve. These were very similar to the ones on the test. All right, so we should get 3x here if you subtract 2x on both sides. Now if I subtract 38, six. So x here would be equal to two. So all it's saying is, what would be the value of the variable? Well, the variable is x. So this question is asking for x, and we got x is equal to 2. Now here it says, if they're parallel again, so same thing, if they're parallel again, angle 4 and angle 6 have these expressions. So I look at angle 4, and that's acute, and this is angle 6, and that's obtuse. So they can't be equal to each other. And in fact, they're not. Angle 4 is acute, angle 6 is obtuse, and they should add up to 180 because of the same side interior angle theorem. Both of them are on the same side and both of them are in this road. So we're going to, this is our formula, and let's solve for x now by adding them together. So I get 5x plus 5 is 180. Get a calculator here, 175 divided by 5, I get 35. So, on question 8, it says find the value of the variable. The variable here is x, and I solved 35. 
next one. So we see angle one and angle three. Angle one is six X, angle three is 120. So they kind of move the road sideways. So looking at it this way, angle one looks obtuse, angle three also looks obtuse. Those are corresponding angles. So angle one has to equal angle three because of the corresponding angle postulate. So we don't know that they're parallel, but it's saying if in fact, what would X need to be to make them parallel? So in the same way, they're asking a slightly different question, but ultimately the same outcome. They would have to be equal if these are in fact parallel. So when we set them equal to each other, I get X is 20. So X needs to be 20 in order for these two lines to be parallel. All right, next one, 60. It says, what's the volume of the composite space round to the nearest whole number? So volume is going to be in centimeters cubed, and then they said nearest whole number means no decimals. Okay, so let's take a look. I have two shapes here. I have this first one and this first one, and they're boxes. So the volume of a box is just base times width times height, and the volume of the other box would be base times width times height. Now let's look at the dimensions. This box is two by five by six. So two by five by six. So that's the volume of 60. Now this one's a little different. It looks like we have to be able to imagine it or if we drew it, um, it looks like the depth of this box lines up with that one. So this one has a depth into the page of five and a front of eight and a height of three. So I believe the dimension of this box is five by three by eight. So this would be five by three by eight. So that's 40, five times eight is 40, and 40 times three is 120. So I got a total of 180 centimeters cubed. Next one. Now we did a problem like this before, and it's very similar to this. It's like find the volume of two objects. It says please round to the nearest whole number if needed. So the bottom of the box is a rectangle, so that'll be base times width times height, four and a half by four and a half by six. Now the volume of the top is a pyramid. So that's going to be base times width times height divide by three. So the volume of a pyramid is base times width times height divided by three. So the base here is still four and a half. Width is four and a half, and the height is two and a half. So that number three was really just a distractor. They tried to trick us there. So we have four and a half times four and a half times six base times width times height. Or Oh, where did that six come? Oh, I made that up. Four and a half by four and a half by two and a half, divide by three. Okay, so let's put all this yuck in a calculator. Four and a half times four and a half times six, 121.5. And this one, four and a half times four and a half times two and a half, divide by three, so I get 16.875. When I add these two together, I get 138.375. So if I round this to the nearest whole number, I simply get 138 feet cubed. Thanks for joining us. Check out the next video to get the remaining questions and the back of the worksheet.